orchestrator, a good orchestrator, will also point out about the drama and the conflict in that national anthem. The conflict lies exactly in the place where they change the words. They change the words from what do we want? We don't want to come back to the land of our forefathers. We need to come back. We want to be a free people in that land, land of Zion and Jerusalem. So what? Every people wants to be a free people in their land. If this is so simple, why for us it is so complicated? Maybe because of that land. That land, the land of Zion and Jerusalem, what does it mean, Zion? What does it mean? Zion is the verb that, because of this, we speak about Zionism. And we study Zionism here in the town school, everywhere. Zionism, what does it mean? The word Zion comes from the word Tzia. Tzia in Hebrew means desert and death. It comes from Jerusalem. As you look upon the desert of Judah and the Dead Sea, and then you call it Zion. What kind of land do we have? We were promised the land of milk and honey. And in Zion we admit that this land is the land of desert and death. If we want to turn the land of desert and death to Yerushalayim, from Zion to Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, that's a long way. It's not just another word. It's another world. Look at the music. That's our land. How many difficult chords? Erex, Zion, Birushalayim. Until you resolve all those conflicts into the world Yerushalayim. go 
to Israel and help the Jews. In the most difficult time in the War of Independence, the longest war of Israel, Molinari conducted the Israeli Philharmonic free of charge. He volunteered for three years, gave 50 concerts for nothing. In 46, the 10th anniversary of the Israel Philharmonic, he asked, how come you never play the national anthem? In Italy, we play the national anthem all the time. So they told him it's, it's a simple folk song. We don't have an orchestration for it. So he volunteered again, he said, I will orchestrate it. And he orchestrated a tikva, and that's the orchestration that David Ben Gurion heard when the land, the state of Israel, was born in 1948. Only that. When Israel was born and we had a state, Molinari disappeared. and was never, ever, to come back. It turned out that he was put to trial in Italy for collaboration with the Nazis. Molinari was the conductor of Mussolini. Toscani fled away and Molinari got in. He was put to trial by his own orchestras. They told him that among other things, he betrayed Jewish musicians in his own orchestra and handed them over to the Gestapo and took them straight away to concentration camps. The trial was over. Molinari was found guilty. He killed himself in jail. That Hatikva is the last time somebody gave him the right conduct an orchestra. When this story became known in Israel, it was forbidden to play Molinari for 15 years. Until Leonard Bernstein came to conduct the Victory Concert on Mount Scopus in Jerusalem, after the Six Days War. He asked for the score of the National Anthem. They gave him the score and he said, what's that? That's not the score. I remember a wonderful score for 48. This is much, this is less good. Where is the score? They told him the story. And then Bernstein said, listen. Didn't you get it? That man came to you to clean his name, to ask for your forgiveness. Okay, maybe there is no mercy for such crimes, but the bottom line is he gave you the most spectacular orchestration on earth. Play it and it will be for the glory of the state of Israel, let if Eret and the Nazis decide. And that evening on Mount Scopus, my father dragged me. I was a little girl. They started singing Hatikva. I looked around. Everybody was. 
Isaac Stern was the first violin. <laughs> Lenny Bernstein conducted the orchestra. And that's how it looked that night. Leonard Bernstein was the conductor as the Israel Philharmonic played Hatikva, the hope.